Good morning, Stampers. Happy Friday. Welcome to this week's Facebook Live. I am so excited about today's Facebook Live because I'm going to share how you can create 12 cards, simple yet beautiful cards, from one piece of 12 by 12 pattern paper. All right. Okay. I got my iPad here. All right. So welcome, welcome. My name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Alberta, Canada. And I am excited to be here to share this project idea with you. Um, now, as paper crafters, we uh, oh, we hoard DSP. We love pretty patterned paper and we've got lots of it. And with the holidays coming up, I thought it would be great to show you how you can really get lots of use out of a sheet of patterned paper and make lots of cards. So we're going to make 12 Christmas cards this morning. Um, it seems like a lot, but I think it'll go pretty quickly. I'm thinking we could do it in maybe 45 minutes to an hour max. Um, but this is an idea that you can turn to over and over and over to make lots of cards. So in addition to what I'm going to share today, I have the same um, ideas that I've created with a different pattern paper and they're all occasion cards. So I'll share those towards the end. All right. Okay, so first of all, let me share what you're gonna need in order to create something similar. Okay, so first of all, you're gonna need one sheet of 12 by 12 pattern paper, and I suggest that you choose something that is non-directional on either side. So this is the one that I'm using, and if you choose something that's not directional, so that doesn't have an up and a down, um, you're able to use both sides easily, okay? So that's gonna allow you a little bit more versatility in your cards. So I've chosen this particular pattern, which is from A Walk in the Park. This is a DSP that's in our September to December 2023 mini catalog. So here's a look at the other patterns. It's got some cute little bears that coordinate with our bear punch and then some stripes on the back. There's some trees, snowflakes, some more bears. These trees coordinate with the merriest trees dies as well. And then there's this one and this one. So this one would have been another good paper to choose from as well. But what I didn't like about this one is there's no blue in this pattern. So for me, I mean, this does you can use these two patterns together, but I think it would be a little bit more of a challenge. So if both sides coordinate, then that makes it even easier. So we've got some more stripes and some trees and then the pattern that I'm using today. So this paper is called A Walk in the Park and this is Stampin' Up's product give back right now. So $4 here in Canada, $4 from every package that is sold goes towards the Salvation Army here in Canada. So it's a great, um, a great way to help out and to add products to your collection as well. Okay, the other thing that you'll need is you'll need a neutral. I'm using white. It's, this is going to be um, either die cut or punched for your greetings. So you'll want something that is neutral that goes with your patterned paper. And then you'll need two sheets of coordinating cardstock. I'm gonna walk you through cutting all of this. Um, so I'm using Garden Green and Pretty Peacock. I love these two colors together. I don't use Garden Green very often, but I do love it with Pretty Peacock. Um, I did throw in a little bit of vellum, so I, I pulled out some vellum. It's just nice to have a little bit of variety in there. Um, and then you'll need 12 card bases. So I chose to use our thick basic white for a couple reasons. First of all, I just, I want these to be quick and easy, but I want them to be beautiful. Um, and I wanted it, like I'm looking for simple because I want to make 12 of them. So I just kept them all the same color choosing white or a lighter color oh just a sec i'm going to close my window the garbage truck is coming okay that shouldn't be too loud now um the other reason i chose white is so that i don't have to add a layer on the inside to write my message so i find when i use darker colored cardstock so if i would have used 
um, either Pretty Peacock, Garden Green, or even the Real Red that's in this DSP as my card base, then sometimes I feel like I need to add a, a, a layer, a lighter layer on the inside. So that just saves that step using a lighter colored or a neutral, um, a lighter neutral card base. Okay, so I've got my 12 card bases that are cut. And then I like to use, to pull out two coordinating ribbons. You don't need to. I just like having an option. And so this is the Real Red and Garden Green. I think it's 3 8 trim combo pack or something along those lines. Um, and because there's Garden Green and Real Red in this DSP, I thought that this would be a perfect choice. I don't have a ton of Garden Green left, so we're going to see what we can do with that. Maybe I can finish off the roll. And then... For those of <laughs> those of you who know me, you know that I love to use Baker's twine, um, but I wanted to bring in some, a little bit of bling. So instead of Baker's twine, I am pulling in some of our Simply Elegant trim in gold, and then I chose my embellishments um, to coordinate. So I'm going to use the gold ones from this. Um, these are the adhesive back sparkle gems. Okay, so the cards that we're making today are really simple. But adding these things in really dress up the card. So you'll see as we create them just how much um, just adding some ribbon or some embellishments can really step up a card. Okay. All right. So those are the consumable supplies that we need. And then you're going to want a greeting set. So I've pulled out a couple. You want something, you want a nice variety because we're going to use a variety of different shape, label shapes. So I've chosen the Brightest Glow, which is my favorite Christmas greeting set. It's from last year. It's in the annual catalog, and I love it because it's got the readings for the outside of the card as well as inside of the card. And then I also chose the Merriest Trees um, because I really like this one, and then there's this greeting for the inside as well. So I might use some of these as well. So I just wanted a nice variety. And then we need some label shapes. So I pulled out two of my favorites, um, Nested Essentials and Stylish Shapes. These are my two go-to label shape dies. I love them. There's a nice variety. We've got some different shapes, different sizes to really make your cards look different so they don't all look the same. Um, however, if you don't have dies, you can always use punches. So there's you can layer circle punches. We've got... Uh, a fancy circle punch, I can't remember what it's called, but that layers, layers really nicely with a two inch circle punch. So you can do things like that as well. Just look in your stash and just find something that will label or will layer nicely um, or that will work with uh, some of your greetings, okay? And then there is one, well, two, two of the cards that we're going to make that I'm going to add some embossing to. So I pulled out an embossing folder and I chose the Timber 3D embossing folder, okay? And then of course you need um, ink. I pulled out Pretty Peacock and Garden Green. All right, so that is everything that you need, I think, <laughs> um, to create this. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start by cutting our DSP and our cardstock. And I'm gonna try to talk um, or walk you through my process when I create multiple cards when I create lots of cards. So I find that it's pretty efficient and you can get them done really quickly. So I'm going to share those tips along the way. All right. So first of all, we're going to take our 12 by 12 and we're going to cut it into 12 pieces of three by four. Not all of them are going to stay three by four, but that's what we're going to start with. Okay. So I'm going to start here because this isn't directional. It doesn't matter which way I cut it. So I'm going to cut four three inch strips first. Okay. And then I'm going to cut three four inch pieces. So I'm going to line this up at eight. That'll give me a four inch piece over here. And then we'll line it up at four and cut. And we're going to do that for all four strips. So if this was directional, then you'd, you just have to, you have to give it more thought. It's not that these cards couldn't be done, 
but to provide a little bit of versatility, I chose something that did, didn't have a direction on either side so that I could easily use both sides of the paper. So we're gonna do basically two of each of six different card designs, but one of them will be using this side and one of them will be using this side. So the cards, they have the same basic layout, but they'll look different because we are using different patterned paper, okay? So we've got our 12 pieces of three by four DSP. We're gonna set those aside. Now we're gonna bring in our two colored pieces. And we are gonna cut them. Okay, they're both gonna be cut a slightly different. So first of all, you're gonna choose one of them and you're gonna cut it to so I'm putting the 11 inch side along the top and I'm gonna cut it at three and a quarter inches. And then I'm gonna rotate it and cut it at four and a quarter. So we have two of those. I'm gonna repeat that again. So three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome. So we are making 12 cards this morning. I'm walking you through the process. So I cut it at three and a quarter again, and then by four and a quarter. So I have six pieces that measure three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So these are gonna serve pretty much as mats for this, okay? Don't get rid of this. This is the, le the leftover piece, we're gonna use that. Now the second piece of accordion cardstock, we're going to, I need to check my notes here. Okay, so I've got the 11 inch side at the top. I'm gonna to line it up at three and a quarter and I'm gonna cut it at four and a quarter. So three and a quarter and then rotate it, cut it at four and a quarter. So I've got two pieces of the green in three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then this piece I've got so this is the seven and three quarter inch length at the top. I'm gonna to cut it at five and a quarter inches. And then I'm gonna rotate it and cut it at four inches. And then four inches again. We don't wanna get rid of these pieces. Okay, we're keeping everything. And this is what I do when I make cards. I don't throw anything out until I'm finished creating whatever project it is that I'm working on. Okay, all right. So I think for now, we're done with the paper trimmer. But what I wanna do is I want to take these two pieces and I want to emboss them. So I'm gonna bring in my machine here. Just bear with me for a second. Okay, so I couldn't do this in advance because, of course, I wanted to walk you guys through how to cut your DSP to make it the most efficient. So you're going to see me do things that normally I have pre-done already. Okay, so let me just check something here. All right. So these two cards, the ones that have embossing on them, are landscape cards. So if your embossing folder is directional, just keep that in mind. This really doesn't matter which way it goes. So let's see, we've got, so this is the timber embossing folder. It's a 3D embossing folder, so I'm using the gray plate. And then I'll do the other one feed it in here and feed it back through. And then we're gonna do one more thing with our die cutting machine before I move it out of the way. Okay, so I've got those two pieces done. We're done with this. Okay, we're done with this. Now this wider piece that I have left over I want to die cut from that. What did I do with the rest? Oh, here he is. 
plates, looking for my other plates here for die cutting. Okay, and I'm gonna take, um, so this is the nested essentials. I wanna make sure I do the right one here. I'm gonna take the second largest rectangle and I'm gonna cut this. And I need two of them. Okay, we'll set that aside. I'll do one more. And then we're ready to start assembling. So I think at the end of, if I remember correctly, at the end of creating all of these cards, this little bit of green cardstock is the only thing I have left over. And you could probably trim some little flags or something like that to add on the inside of your cards if you wanted. You could definitely use that up. Okay, so next step, I'm gonna bring in my card bases. and we're gonna fold them. So remember I was gonna share some tips on mass production. And when you produce a lot of cards, the easiest way to do it is to do it assembly line style. What you do for one, do for all. And this is much easier if you are creating exactly the same card which we are not doing. We're not doing 12 of exactly the same card. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by creating our bases. So we're gonna use our patterned paper and do whatever we need to do to do that. And then we'll work on stamping our greetings and then we'll work on um, embellishing and putting it all together. All right, okay. So our 12 card bases. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in two of them because what we do, we're gonna do, remember we're doing two of each. Okay, so we're gonna take one of our peacock mats and one of our garden green mats. And I'm just looking here, we want to do it this way. Okay, all right, so at the end, I have a completely different set of cards that I use this idea with that I'll share with you. Used completely different pattern paper. They're not, it's not Christmassy, kind of all occasion cards. So you can use this idea over and over and over. You'll wanna save this video for sure. Look how pretty that looks. Okay, and then we'll do this one. And go on there so we'll have about a quarter of an inch showing all the way around and then we're going to attach these to our card bases right in the center so this particular one is going to be a landscape card So this paper pack, A Walk in the Forest, this is the paper pack that everybody who's coming to my stamp stack in November will um, get a package of this DSP because we're gonna use this DSP in class and create 12 cards. All right, um, okay, so first two done, I'm gonna set those aside and then we'll work on the next two. So the next two, I'm gonna do basically the same thing. I'm gonna take this, hang on here. This one goes on here, this one goes on here. So I'm gonna repeat that same process. So again, this is gonna be probably a little bit of a longer video just because I really wanted to show you cutting, how to cut your patterned paper and your cardstock. 
so that you can stretch the supplies. So I couldn't pre-do most of this stuff. Normally I like to pre-do some of the stuff so that the videos don't take so long. All right, and then this one. Okay. So even though this is the same process as, that we did on the first two cards, these two cards will be different than the first two. Okay, then we're gonna set that aside. And next up, Okay, next up we're gonna take two of these and two of the peacock ones, we're gonna slide the, slide the rest away. We're gonna bring back our paper trimmer and for two of these pieces, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut, I've got the four inch length at the top and I'm gonna cut it at three inches and then I'm gonna flip it around and then do the same with this one. This one is three. And then for this one, the top one will get flipped around. Okay, so then we'll bring these pieces in. And we're gonna stick these down. So I'm leaving an even border around the, the top and the three sides, or the two sides. Oh, let's make sure it's straight here. Okay, and then we'll add adhesive to this. And we're gonna butt that right up against that piece. So it's still three by four, it just shows us both patterns. And then we're gonna repeat that over here. Do that guy, and then this one. And then we'll bring in our card bases, and these two cards are gonna be portrait. We're gonna do them this way. You can do them landscape as well. Because this isn't directional, you could always switch it around, right? All right. Okay, and then those two we'll put aside. Okay, next one. We're gonna bring in two of these and we're gonna bring back our paper trimmer and we're gonna cut. So I've got the four inch length at the top and I'm gonna cut one inch strips. And I'm gonna keep them in order. So we've got that one, and I'm gonna do the same for this one. This one I'm gonna flip over. Okay, so these are gonna get put onto our card base like that. So just one of them will be flipped over. So we have a little bit of contrast. Okay, so for this, for this one, I do like to kind of position my strips first so that I can figure out the spacing. And then I'm gonna adhere Need to refill my glue. Okay, and I'd hear this one first. Position these, and then I'm gonna adhere this one next. Because then I can kind of center the other two
and it doesn't need to be perfect because remember these are handmade cards. Nobody expects perfection. And then we'll add this guy and this one. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing with this one. So again, I'll put my pieces on. Kind of give me an idea of how they should be or where they should be positioned. So that can be over a little bit. Okay, we'll start with this one. And then we'll go with this one. So you can see that even though I cut my patterned paper into 12 pieces that are the same size, I'm still adjusting the layout of each of the cards so that they don't look all the same. There's so much that you can do with a three by four inch piece of patterned paper. And all your cards will look different. Okay, there's that one. Then moving on to the next one. Okay, we're gonna take our last two pieces of Peacock and two pieces of this we'll flip one over okay so for this one we're going to do some distressing so i'm going to open my snips and just kind of roughen up the edges just a little bit i'm going to do that for all four of these pieces our cardstock. And one more. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add adhesive to the back of this and we're gonna offset it. So we're gonna do it kind of like that. We'll do the same for this one. Kind of offset it a little bit. And then we're going to add these to our card bases. And so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make sure that this patterned piece is straight. So it's kind of centered and I'm not going to worry too much about the peacock layer and this is going to be a portrait card as well but again you can switch it up you could always make it go this way it doesn't matter because our paper is not directional all right those two are done. Now we're working on our last ones, which include our two pieces of DS or embossed paper. We're gonna do one like this, one like this. Remember this strip that we had left over. 
We're gonna use this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this up to four inches. And then I'm gonna cut it in half. So it is an inch and a quarter. So it doesn't even, it, it doesn't have to be perfectly in half. We're just gonna use it to have just a tiny little bit showing. Um, and then from that white piece that we had pulled out, you do need a little, another little strip. So I'm just grabbing some scraps because I've already die cut all my label shapes. I didn't want you guys to watch that because there's lots of little bits and pieces that we need for that. And I'll walk you through what I did for that. So this piece I'm gonna set aside because I will come back and use that. All right, so now here, what we're gonna do is we are going to use these on either side for a bit of contrast. Now I could have used red as well or instead of the white because there is red in here but I really wanted to show you guys that you don't need to have a ton of supplies in order to create lots of cards so that's why I chose not to pull in a third color So I just want a sliver of white showing and then we can go ahead and add this. Onto this piece and this again is going to be a landscape card. But again, like I said before, you can, because it's not directional, you can switch it around. Now I'm, I'm hanging off the edge here, so I'm just gonna trim this. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing with this one. A little bit of that peacock showing. And then this is going to get attached to our green, and then that will go onto our card base. And then all of our card bases are done. Okay, so we'll stick these on here. Pop this down. So we've got about an quarter, or not a quarter, an eighth of an inch all the way around the edges. And then this one. Okay, so now we have all of our bases done. Okay, so they're ready for our greetings and to be embellished. So I'm gonna set those aside and we're gonna work on the next step. So again, uh, the whole point, assembly line style, so this happens quickly. Now I have pre-cut all of my die cut pieces. So as we go through, I'll kind of walk you through what I cut. We're gonna start with this one here, which is the smallest one from this nested essentials, this kind of diamond shape one. So we're gonna do, we're gonna stamp on that and we are gonna use the greeting that says happy holidays. And we're gonna stamp it in, let's do it in pretty peacock. Okay. And we'll just stamp that right in the middle here on both of them. Okay. 
Okay. So these two are gonna go with the first two that we did. So those two are gonna go with that. All right, we're gonna set that aside. Next up, we're going to use, I think I'll keep the peacock out. Okay, next we're gonna use these ones. Okay, so these were cut using the second and third smallest flag shapes, again from the nested essentials. And for this one, let's use, let's use all is merry and bright. And we'll do it in peacock again since it's out. Maybe we'll just stamp everything in peacock just to simplify. Okay, that piece is done. So then these are gonna go on the next two. So the, these were exactly the same as the first two. So we'll put these two pieces with this and then we'll move on to the next one. The next one is, all right, these ones and these ones. Remember we cut those from the green scrap that we had left. Okay, so at this point I need to decide whether I want my rectangles to go this way or if I want them to go this way. And I was thinking if this fits, it does fit. So I'm gonna use this. Okay, so this is we wish you a Merry Christmas. So I'm gonna have my rectangles go vertically instead of horizontally. I think this just fits. Okay, so these ones are gonna go on here, on these two. So I will pop these on here. We'll come back to those when we're ready for the next step. Next up, we're gonna use these two and these were cut using the largest flag shape from the Stylish Shapes dies. And we're gonna use this one that says to you and yours this Christmas. Okay, for this one, I wanna stamp it a little closer to the right-hand side. So by switching out the greetings and switching out the shapes that we've die cut for our labels, it's gonna change the look of the cards. So these ones will go with this. And I'll set those aside. And so we've got two more left here, okay. Next up, I've got some circles. These were cut using the third and fourth smallest um, circles from the Stylish Shape Styles. And we're gonna stamp the word joy. on these smaller ones. Okay, and that's gonna go on here. I'll set that aside. And then our last one is, okay, I use those stylish shape circles again, except I think I used the fourth and fifth smallest and the largest ones are done from vellum. Now, I didn't have a greeting pulled out. I wonder if this, no, we won't use that. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we've got here that will fit. Wishing you a season of hope and light. I think that will fit in there. Yes, it will. All right, we'll grab a block for that.
great thing about stamping on a circle. It doesn't matter if it's straight. Okay, so all of our greetings have now been done. Now we get the fun part. We get to decorate or embellish. Okay, so we'll, we'll start with this one since the stuff is out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to, this is going to go on here like this, and I need some seal adhesive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a strip down of seal adhesive on both of these. And because I have a lot of red ribbon and not so much green, I'm going to use red and I'm just going to weave it back and forth. So I've got three strips going across. And then I'm going to do the same for this one. This one needs a little bit more here. Okay. Okay, so we could, you know, you could have, and I should have showed you this before I put the ribbon on, but we could have just added that on there. And you know what? It's fine, right? It's, it's a nice, simple card. And you can leave it like that. You don't need to add anything else. But I wanted to show you how you can take that simple card design and you can step it up by adding a little bit of ribbon and a, little, and a few embellishments. I'm just going to adjust this a bit. Okay, so we're gonna add that ribbon and then we're gonna take some dimensionals. Actually, let's adhere. No, we're gonna do this first. Um, we'll flip these over and add some dimensionals. Okay, and I'll do this one on this, and then we can adhere them to our card base. Okay. And our first two cards are almost done. We're gonna set them aside. We'll still come back and add some embellishments. So a little bit of bling at the end. Oh, you know what? I did one more thing. You know what? We're gonna, we'll, we'll do this next step first. Okay, and then next up we've got these ones. So these ones here. So I'm gonna go ahead uh, let's see here I'm just catching up on some uh, comments here good morning everyone welcome Leanne you're still in Victoria when are you coming back you've been there forever um good morning good morning good morning Oh, I'm sorry to be here about your fiance, Missy. Oh, that's terrible. All right, so we're gonna stick these down first and then I'm gonna add a little bit of ribbon. So we'll do, I think I'm gonna add red for this one. So again, I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive and and stick that down on there. So for those of you who are just joining in a little bit late, we um, are making 12 cards from one piece of 12 by 12 pattern paper. So we are just on the embellishing stage. 
well, I guess we're still kind of assembling as well. Okay, and then I wanna bring in some of this gold. I'm gonna tie a bow. And I want it to be a little bit of a larger bow. Let's leave a little bit longer end here. So I wanna bring in a touch of gold. And I'm gonna make my loops a little bit bigger. So we'll do two of these. Okay, we're gonna bring in some mini glue dots. And I'm gonna pop this on here like that. We'll do the same for this one. So, so nice with that touch of gold. And then we're going to add a couple of, oops, a couple dimensionals on here. And this is gonna get stuck on there. Isn't that nice with that added little bit of gold in there? We'll do the same thing over here. Pop that on there. So again, we'll come back and we'll add some bling to those in a bit, but we're gonna move on to the next one. Okay, next one is this one here. So this one, these two are gonna get some dimensionals. Oh, I must've printed on this. I've got some printing on the back here. And then this is gonna go straight across. And again, you can leave it like this. There's nothing wrong with this card, just like that. If you wanna make it simple like that, that is, it's perfectly fine. I always love to add a little bit of ribbon and a little bit of bling just to step it up just a little bit. But this is always an option. I mean, that that is a great card right there. Okay, so for this, look at that, spool is done. Gonna take this tape off if I can. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of green on here. Actually, maybe we'll just use all of it. We'll finish it off. Um, I'm gonna use mini glue dot for this. Add another one so that it holds the second piece down. And then we'll do some red over here. And another piece of red. I always try to avoid cutting my ribbon until I know how much is on there so that I don't waste any. Okay, and then I wanna add a gold bow. Oh, and my phone's ringing. Okay. All right, so we've got our gold bows. We're gonna add those using mini glue dots. Oh, that didn't work very well. Let's stick a mini glue dot on here and then we'll stick the bow on. So again, just that added touch of that shimmer 
so nice. Okay, those two will set aside. Next ones are these ones here. All right, so these ones are gonna go like this. And again, you can just leave them like that. You could also put this in the middle. I like it so that it's kind of hanging off the edge. And these are gonna go on flat, so we'll stick these first. And I'm gonna have them, like I said, extending past the edge just a little bit. And then this piece is gonna get popped up. So I'll add some dimensionals to this. So this, these are, I think these are cards seven and eight. And I don't know how long we've been going here. I don't know what time it is. Let's see, almost an hour. It's about been about 50 minutes. So about 12 cards in probably, it'll probably take us about an hour. So we're almost done. Okay, so now this one is a little bit different than the sample that I made. So now I need to figure out where, if, where and if I want to put my ribbon. That kind of takes, you know what? I think we're going to leave the ribbon off of this one. So my other sample that I'll share um, does have ribbon on, but I think we're going to leave that off of there. Okay, next up is this one. Okay, so we're going to take these pieces and stick them in behind here. like that. And again, you could have cut these in your your third coordinating color. So I could have cut these in red if I wanted to. Okay, I'll flip them over. Add dimensionals. Make sure these pieces are straight here. Okay. You can see by doing it assembly line style like this, it does speed up the process a fair bit. I mean, I did have these labels cut out and it's easy It's easy enough to say, but when, because I've, I have my samples done. Um, so if you guys are copying these designs, you could definitely do it this way. It's a little bit different um, if you don't know what you're gonna do for your embellishing. So this is going to go on here like this and this one on here. Like that. And then we're going to bring in some more gold. And I'll trim this and that's going to go on there. Here's my end, here it is. Okay, and then we've got just one last one to do. And then we'll add our embellishments and then I'll show them all to you, all laid out. Okay. Put that on there and this guy. Okay, and then we'll set those aside. And then our last one is this one here, which we're going to use some of this red ribbon again. Okay, I'm just going to cover.
cover this over. I don't think I need this anymore. Okay, so we're gonna pull in some of this red ribbon and add that on there. And do the same with this one. And then we're gonna do some gold. And again, I'm gonna do a little bit of a bigger bow. I want my loops to be nice and big so that I can see them from in behind my greeting. And then one more. Okay. That's gonna go on here like that. And then we're gonna pop some dimensionals onto the back of these pieces. You know, the great thing about videos like this is you can always speed through, <laughs> right? If you're watching the replay, if you're watching it live, then it's a little tricky. You can't, can't really speed through, but if you're watching the replay, you can go back, you can go to the parts, skip through to the parts that you, that interest you or that you need a refresher on. Look at that. Love, love. All right. Okay, now the last step is just to add our embellishments. And of course, you can skip this step if you want. I just like to add a little bit more bling. So I'll add just a few on here like this. There is card number one done. So let me slide this apart aside here. So card number one and then card number two, we're gonna add a couple, we'll just add a couple to this one. Maybe a bigger one and a smaller one. There's card number two, and then card number three. We'll add a couple to this one as well. Slide this aside. Okay, so card number three, and then card number four. all out of order here. I guess it doesn't really matter where I add them. Let's do one, oops, two, three, okay, there we go. Hey, Shauna. We are making, we are working on just embellishing our 12 cards that we made today. Okay, and then this guy, let's do, we're gonna do one on here. And then we'll do a couple little ones. So we made 12 cards from one piece of patterned paper. Okay, and then the last one is this one, and I did wanna add in a gold bow for this one as well. So I'm just gonna tie a couple more bows. And mini glue dots. And add that right there. And then we'll add our little embellishments.
And then I think I'll share, I'll share a closer look at each of the designs as well as the all occasion ones that I did. Okay, that on there and where did our embellishments go? There and this one. So I've challenged myself to actually use this entire package of a Walk in the Forest DSP. So between my stamp -a stack and this set of cards, I think I will be pretty close. Um, okay, so there are our 12 cards. Now I know you can't see them all, but let's go through them. Okay. All right, so first up, Let's do this one first. So here was card number one. And here is an alternate version. So this one I used um, the Countryside Inn, I think it's called, that, that DSP. So the one with all the blues. And I added in, this is the reason why I like two different colors of ribbon. I added in the Boho Blue Ribbon and then also Knight of Navy Ribbon. And then, of course, White Baker's Twine. So two different ideas so you can see that you can switch out you can switch this design out using any pattern paper any greeting make it for any occasion okay so that is card number one and then we have card number two it's this one here and then here is the other version that up a little higher so you guys can see it so for this one I did do something a little bit different instead of just using the white twine I did use the fibers from the boho blue ribbon so that's one thing that I did change up all right so there is card number two and then card number three so this is the one that I made a slight modification on So here, this one I made into a birthday card. And the greeting didn't take up as much space as the greeting on this one. So I had some extra space. So I added my ribbon and twine to the left of the greeting, whereas this took up more space. So I chose to leave the greeting off of this one. Yeah, that's right, Louise. They are super simple cards. Um, and so versatile. <clears throat> okay, and then here is, what are we on? Four, I think, card number four. I love this one. And then here is the other version. Okay, and then card number five is this one here. I like this one as well. And then... That one, let's move it up a little. We've got those just for you. I like cards that have greetings that can be used for anything. So I could stamp happy birthday on the inside. Thank you. Just depends on what I, what I need. And then card number six. There we go. So you can see that you really can use any patterned paper um, and any greeting and make this work for any occasion. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's, today's video. Um, if you do try this idea and you share photos on social media, make sure that you tag me. I would love to see them or send me photos if you don't share them on social media. Um, I always love to see what you guys are creating. Okay, so I will add in a full supply list to this video in the description so you can watch for that. And I will have photos of all of these cards over in today's blog post. It'll just take me a while to take the photos. All right. So thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next week. All right. Take care. Bye guys.